guys, just finished watching uh, Atlanta Town against Bray in the SSC Air Tracy First Division. Um, you know, I'll draw, <laughs> you know, draw for Bray, uh, but in the circumstances, I think Gary Cronin will uh, be quite happy that they got out of there with a draw tonight, uh, given they were down to 10 men for 55 minutes of the game. Uh, Ryan Graydon um, seemed to kick out at, uh, at the Atlanta Town defender. Um, in the corner, the the ball was rushed out, and uh, the Athlone Town defender seemed to be tugging at a uh, at Graydon's at Graydon's uh, shorts, and then obviously he got frustrated, he kicked out, shouldn't have kicked out, but he did, uh, and the advice of the linesman um, seemed to suggest uh, that the referee made the decision, um, and he brought the the card out of his pocket, red card, straight red, and sent off. So after thirty five minutes, uh, Bray Bray dominated. The first half an hour, 35 minutes, and obviously Atlon uh, came back into the game uh, when when Bray Ware which was a 10 men. Uh, they didn't really have that many chances in the game. The um, the one chance I can remember was quite late on. Uh, Derek Daly, obviously ex Bray, got down got down the left hand side, crossed in. His 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 cross was ushered, uh, was neatly cushioned down towards uh, James Dunne by Curtis Bourne. And uh, Connor Clifford got the block in. He threw everything at it. Um, it was a battling performance from Bray. It really was. Um, given, as I said, they were down to 10 men. And would they have taken a point when Ryan was sent off? Probably yes. Uh, Bray are now up a place with that draw. Uh, the fifth, there's four points separating um, Bray in fifth and UCD in second. Um, I think Treaty and Galway are on similar points as well. So... Uh, shells look shells are gonna run away with the lady they already are so um it's it let's play for second now and uh got the back in the car line next week against cove uh hoping for three points but uh that's more or less it about the game and um, wasn't many chances for either side um certainly after bray went down to 10 men there wasn't any chances for bray that many chances for bray atlanta had a few and as i said they're doing a chance late on probably uh would have won the game but uh, again, it finished at Town nil, Bray Wanderers nil. All right, guys, just after watching the Dundalk Derry game there, great result for Dundalk. Uh, two wins on the bounce now. That's <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. Vinnie Barrett's definitely come in and settle, settle the ship. Uh, first half, I thought Dundalk were by far the better team. Probably should have been more than one nil up, but uh, yeah, the keeper couldn't do anything about the goal. I don't think uh, the defence for Derry switched off completely. And let, let Danny Kelly in, and yeah, it was a good poaching goal. But that's that's what you need to do sometimes. That's, they're they're the goals that win the games. <laughs> and in the second half, then Derry came into it a bit more, a bit more lively. Very interesting second half, and I have to say I enjoyed it. Penalty it was definitely a penalty. Yeah, he pulled him down. Then ha touch your handball as well. But I was uh, at this point not to see Chris Shields step up to take it. Would have been nice to send off for him, but. Get to that in a second. <laughs> uh, no, but it was good. At least Pat Hoven put in the back of that. That's what you want. You know, at the end of the day, you don't really care who takes the penalties, but wants to go in the back of the net. So, yeah, it was very good to see Dundalk now uh, pick up another win. So, it's seven points from possible nine from the three games for any part. So, everything's going in the right direction now. And uh, especially Derry have been on form lately. I think, was it eight, eight games out of defeat? So, yeah. That's very good for them, Doc, to put, put an end to that there in Oriel Park. And uh, just before going, I just want to say a quick goodbye to Chris Shields and half all the Doc uh, FC fans. I'm like, sure we're, we're going to miss him. We're all going to miss him. The league isn't going to be the same without him even. He's a huge servant to Dundalk and a huge servant to the league, representing Dundalk in two uh, Europa League group stages, captaining them in group stages as well. He's done everything for Dundalk. So I just want to say a big thank you to Chris Shields for everything he's done. And best of luck in the future. Montan. How's it going guys? Um I'm just hopping on here to give my match reaction quickly. Uh to St. Pat's and their one all draw to Waterford and the RSC. So off the bat, you know, frustrating result. Um probably more frustrating now the fact that Shamrock Rovers have also dropped points against Drogheda. Um it was a big opportunity for Pats to capitalise and, you know, start to 
to, to build a bit of a gap at the top of the league, as optimistic as it sounds, you know, you have to be aiming to win every game, you know, um, especially against the Waterford side that you probably would have seen uh, a few weeks ago as maybe being a bit of a, a pushover, but that definitely isn't the case anymore. Um, I think the new manager, Bertram, um, really changed Waterford a lot. But with that said, the game itself, uh, Alfie Lewis got a red card for St. Pat's 15 minutes in and Pat's won the same ever since. For the first 15 minutes, we were brilliant. We were knocking the ball around. One and two touch football. It was brilliant to watch. Uh, Pat's got a goal. Matty Smith in the first 15 minutes, like I said. Um, yeah, we were unplayable. Really amazing stuff. Waterford were chasing shadows. And then eventually the, the tide starts to turn. As you know, you get... A red card, Pat's got down to 10 men. Um, my opinion on the red card, for me, um, as a Pats fan, you know, my heart's telling me no that it wasn't, but the more I look at it, he was the last man. I can't see why it's a red card. I, yeah, although it hurts, uh, yeah, it is a red card. So when Pats went down to 10 men, we sort of sat back a little bit deeper. We lost the midfield battle. Because uh, Waterford had an extra man in midfield. But, you know, the boys, they gave a, a real dig out, to be fair to them. Obviously, we conceded a goal, but sure, it can be expected when you have to do whatever, like 75, 80 minutes with 10 men. It can be very hard. So, all in all, I thought the boys were very good. Uh, in parts, although we did sat deep, sit deep, you know, what can you expect? Um, Waterford, definitely not any mugs anymore. Definitely going to surprise a few people for the second half of the season and um, one of my highlights from the game would probably be you know Robbie Benson was very good Robbie Benson you know ever since he came back from that injury he's really looked really like he's on the ball and he's ready to go so yeah that's a silver lining I guess another talking point would be with about five minutes to go 85th minute Pats were in on goal, Dara Burns. I thought he sort of got away from Jamie Maskell. I thought maybe if the Lewis fellows a red card, maybe he had a, an argument for that to be a red card too. But Asher, uh, sure, I don't think it would have affected the game too much with only five minutes left. So all in all, you know, Pats, we have a hard game now in Daly Mount next week against Bowes, who play tomorrow against Sligo. So that will be an interesting one to see how that game plays out. But um, yeah, I think you can't really judge the past season too much on this result because obviously we did only have 10 men for most of the game but overall you know we move on cheers lads full time at Talca Park Cork City 1 Shelburne 2 Cork City had a few chances the first half was mostly just Cork City passing the ball around pass pass but Shelburne did get into the game a bit more and the opening goal came I think I'm not quite sure but I think it was around the 20th Maybe, no, not 20, sorry, maybe like 30, 38 minute mark when Ali Gilchrist curled a ball from a free kick into the box and Mikey O'Connor flicked the header past Mark Manolte into the goal to make it Shelburne 1, Cork City 2. But Cork City then also, Cork City showed their worth and showed how good they were by passing the ball about a lot and then obviously didn't get a goal and then towards the end of the half, um, I can't remember who it was who had a shot for Shelburne, but it, a miraculous save just at the halftime whistle by Mac McNulty to keep Cork in it. And then uh, in the second half, then in the second half, just around maybe the... And then the second half, Cork City came out firing, a lot of good passing, a lot of a lot of good passing, a lot of good movement. And then around maybe the 48, 49, 50th minute or so, uh, Shelburne messed up. Um, Shelburne messed up with their passing. A ball dropped from around twenty five yards out, and Keen Murphy had a shot from twenty five yards out, which just went past um, the Shelburne keeper at the at the back post, and yeah, so so that and then it went in, and then Cork huffed and puffed with changes such as Dylan McGlade, Eunice Cargbo, and Jack Walsh coming on. Cork huffed and puffed. They just couldn't get the goal they wanted. And a draw for me would have been the best result, but Cork couldn't get that. And to be fair to Shelburne, Shelburne did hold Cork City out a lot and well. So yeah, Cork City. So Cork City have lost again and hopefully I'll be doing a run at 3D. Cork City 
for the final score of Cork City, our final score in Talca Park, Cork City 1, Sherbourne 2. Peace. Uh, full time, Blues 1, Pats 1. Um, get the negative out of the way first. I uh, feel like we should have, uh, could have and would have won that game if we'd have shown more ambition. I thought we were very, um, very poor uh, defensively as well. Only let down, I think only Pats were let down by the fact that they got a man sent off so early on, otherwise they probably would have won that game. Um, we made a lot of mistakes that would have been punished by better opposition, uh, I think. And, you know, Pats maybe, uh, had they had 11 men on the field, would have punished them as well. Like, you know, let's not forget they're top of the league right now. Um, I thought um, for positives... Uh, we did show some good passages of play and uh, at the same time, you know, you would have taken a one-all draw before the game kicked off. So, you know, look, that's looking on the bright side. Uh, we'll away to Derry next week. That's going to be an important game for us. I suppose they're all important at this stage. But, you know, you feel like you, maybe we can get something out of it. And, you know, look, we would have been jumping for joy um, a couple of weeks ago uh, with a one-all draw at home to the Pats. Uh, we're disappointed with it at this stage. That shows uh, how far we've come in such a short space of time and uh, hopefully we can keep pushing on.